recording. Hello everyone. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon and a good evening. Welcome to the Spun Virtual Debates 2020 scrimmage for today. Our host today is Fred Becker, who will be managing the technical aspects of our match. Our judges are Jim Plaxco and Maggie Berthium. Jim Plaxco is president of the Chicago Society for Space Studies and volunteers as a NASA JPL Solar System Ambassador. He is a former president of the Northern Illinois Space Advocacy, a former vice president and director of both the National Space Society and the Planetary Studies Foundation. Maggie Berthium is director of debate at Woodward Academy in Atlanta, GA, where she has coached a number of state and national champions. A graduate of Dartmouth College, Maggie competed in interscholastic debates herself before moving into teaching and coaching. And I am the timekeeper and facilitator for Room 11, and my name is Apurva. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort and not on any preset NSS position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop, and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open, honest discussion, debate, will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement made by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. Let's meet our debaters. Team Delta, please give us your name, home country, and ethnicity. Hi, I'm Gozo and I'm from Romania, and I'm Romanian. Hi, I'm Harry, I'm from Romania, and I'm also Romanian. Hi, I'm Maya Mohanty, I'm from the United States, and I'm half Indian, half German. Thank you, Team Delta. Team Super Heavy, please give us your name, home country, and ethnicity. Good morning, everyone. I am Abhinaya, Hyderabad, India. I'm an Indian. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rishika. I'm from India, and I'm an Indian. Hello, I am Andre. I'm from Romania, and I'm a Romanian. Hello, I'm Ryan from Florida, United States, and I am a Vietnamese American. Thank you, Team Super Heavy. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participants icon. Please mute your mic unless you are speaking and only the presenting team and the judges should turn on their videos unless directed by the moderator. Here is our format for our debates today. Each member of Team Delta will speak for two minutes taking the affirmative position. I will let the speaker know when two minutes is reached. After the affirmative eight minutes, Team uh, Super Heavy will speak, will speak for two minutes and will give their negative arguments. After hearing their arguments, our host will open the breakouts for five minute conversations for teams to prepare their summary and the judges to confer. The breakouts will close and the affirmative side with only one person from Team Delta now presenting their three minute summary. I'll indicate when your time limit has expired. Finally, one person from the negative side, Team Super Heavy, will present their three minute summary and I'll indicate the time limit if needed. If there is time, the judges may ask a question of the teams. The questions may be answered by any and all members of the teams. The judges will use their breakout to discuss their findings and determine the match winner. After eight minutes, judges will return to the common Zoom room to give their decision and feedback should time allow. We have a hard debate session stop at 9.15 a.m. CDD for this room. All right, Mr. Becker, do we only have the judges and affirmative team with live videos and mics? Yes, we do. Let's get started. We'll first hear from the first speaker from Team Delta representing the affirmative position for resolution B. The gateway will be critical in expanding the human presence to moon and deeper into the solar system. Team Delta, your first speaker may begin. The topic of whether or not the gateway should be built has been a controversial topic for some time. However, even though many people think that the gateway will be expensive to make and maintain, they don't realize that the profit that is generated from it will benefit the economy and society overall. Space.com states that it's entirely possible that when we really explore the moon properly, we will find higher concentrations of some of these materials, materials that are not resolvable by orbital remote sensing. The moon may harbor concentrations of rare earth metals such as uranium and thorium, as well as other useful materials that we are not aware of today in small geographical restricted areas. Mining rare resources such as uranium will not only benefit society with nuclear power, but will be sold to, for a lot of money, impacting the economy in a positive way. Ian Crawford, professor of planetary science and astrobiology at Berkrick College, London, stated that the platinum group elements will be mined on asteroids. Going to the moon for scavenging polar volatiles, rare earth 
elements in the impact sites of crashed asteroids could offer an added bonus. Add all these things together, even without the helium-3. Therefore, you, can, you can't see that the moon, you can see, you can start to see that the moon will become of an economic interest in the longer term. The gateway would enable easy access to these materials and would lead to advancements in technology and with the human race, leading to a betterment and equal opportunity for people, regardless of gender, race, or political status, and supporting the concept of universalization. Up next, I will be speaking about how the Gateway would enable resource allocation. Thank you, Speaker 1. Speaker 2 from Team Delta, you may begin. Since the very first humans walked on the moon, NASA has been intrigued by the various valuable materials and many discoveries located on the moon. In order to accomplish this feat, NASA would have to build a lunar gateway, enabling easy access to the moon and deep space. Popular science stated that future lunar settlers could mine and refine silicon into semiconductors to create solar panels that could power their outposts. Silicon makes up 20% of the moon's regolith. Also, if all the shadow divots at the moon's poles have as much ice as the Cadiz crater in the south, settlers could tap some 2.9 billion metric tons of water for drinking and farming. If they split it into hydrogen and oxygen, it could also be fuel for Mars-bound rockets and can result in a positive impact on the economy in other countries. Science and claims that one of the biggest benefits of the Lunar Gateway would be the continued scientific exploration of Earth's only satellite. The six missions that landed on the moon only explored a few square miles of the lunar surface. Much of the material history of the moon remains unknown, and further exploration could answer many questions about the moon's formation and early history. The Lunar Gateway would enable scientists and researchers from all over the world to study and conduct research about the lunar surface. And the Gateway would create incredible opportunities for people regardless of gender, race, and political status. Due to the research opportunities provided by the Gateway, more people would be able to be involved and participate in this. Next, Harry will be speaking about the practicality of the Gateway. Thank you, Speaker 2. Speaker 3 from Team Delta, you may begin. The moon has always been of great interest to humanity. It is excuse constantly me. represented both in mythology and science. Harry, excuse me. Yep. Um, uh, Mr. Becker, do you see my um, uh, request? Mm. Speaker 3 from Team Delta, you may begin. The moon has always been of great interest to humanity. It is constantly represented both in mythology and in science. People from Anton Chekhov to even Plato have been fascinated by this astral entity. In our days, we have managed to set foot upon it. However, due to costs, we have not accessed it for 48 years. But the time of our impasse has ended. With this great creation, we will be able to analyze one of the biggest obsessions of prior societies. Not only that, with the discoveries that we will obtain and based on the experience we will gain during the Lunar Gateway project, it will act as a prototype for any other mission that aligns with the general interest of this one, discovery. This amazing machinery will allow us to explore in a way we, could, we couldn't even dream of 50 years ago. NASA states that one of the greatest benefits of the Gateway is its mobility, which will allow us to explore everything that is on the moon, uh, on the moon's surface and perhaps even below it. Additionally, additionally, it would be able to act as a fuel stop for other missions. NASA has been very open regarding this subject, constantly showing the populace their plans for this mission. The Lunar Gateway could, could represent a great step in discovery, economics, resource, uh, resources and discovery. With the proper technology, it can greatly facilitate the findings of resources specific to the lunar surface that cannot be found on Earth, such as the helium-3 isotope, which can be used for fusion reactors, which in turn would represent a great step in the energy industry, being able to completely innovate the renewable energy industry, and at the same time diminish fossil fuel usage, solving another one of humanity's challenges. Next up, Roland will talk about the other technological advantages of the Gateway. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 3. Speaker 4 from Team Delta, you may begin. We think that the Gateway is a key component in the process of establishing bases and settlements on the Moon and beyond it. The Gateway is a joint effort by NASA, ESA, Roscosmos, JAXA, CSA to put this modular space station around the Moon thus helping to create bonds between humans, 
families and reliabilities on each other. All this is to help us achieve universalization later on. Some of its advantages are the ability to expand the length of the communication into space, the easiness of expansion with new modules when it's required, at the same time acting like a pit stop, where ships meant to travel further are fueled and the astronauts can rest and revitalize. It is essential that the gateway will be ready or in its uh, most uh, bare bones, from, um, it is estimated that the gateway will be ready in its most basic form in 2026. The first phase of the gateway construction focuses on installing the power propulsion modules. And shortly after that, a module able to sustain a crew of four astronauts for 30 days uh, will be added. This could help NASA's plan to travel to the moon in 3030 or one of the other several missions proposed by 2028, including several piloted missions. We think that the gateway is a crucial is crucial in expanding into deep space because it is a one-time investment. It's decently costly one, but it will pay for itself in no time. The whole point of space exploration is to extend the bounds of human knowledge and to help us discover new ways to make life easier and help us extend into space. Imagine you have to cut out a large forest and you only have a few rusty tools. Instead of wasting time on chopping down trees with an old axe, you should work smarter and invest in a chainsaw to help you more in the long term. This is what the Gateway is trying to achieve by working smarter, not harder. On the 26th of March of this year, uh, this ambition project was taken down from NASA's priority list, but after a deep reconsideration, it was re-added to the top just 10 days ago, showing that it is in fact- Thank you, Speaker Ford. Your time Thank is you. up. Thank you, Speaker Ford. Thank you, Team Delta. It's time to hear from Team Super Heavy representing the negative position. Do we have only the judges and negative team with live video and mics? Speaker one from Team Super Heavy, you may begin. Respected jury, coaches, and my fellow mates, a very good morning, afternoon, evening to one and all present here. Our team will be telling you about economics management, gateway sustainability, astronauts' health, and NASA skepticism. The gateway is not justified while its cost may be astronomical. According to NASA.gov, the total cost of the ISS was $150 billion, and the cost for every person on the ISS was $7.5 million per day. The gateway is much further from Earth than the ISS, and with the help of space.com study, we found out Apollo's cost was approximately $109 billion. According to spin of NASA.gov, a mission to the moon is about 1,000 times further from Earth than missions to the International Space Station. Also, according to space.com, a trip to Mars takes since six months there and the same coming back, and only a few hours to get to the ISS. So the cost of maintaining the lunar spacecraft will be a lot bigger than maintaining the ISS. A study made by space.com related that Gateway will be the biggest rocket ever launched. Not only the components will cost a lot, but also the cost of the launch and placing the spacecraft in the lunar orbit will be astronomical. According to Mars.nas.gov, the total minimum delta V to send a spacecraft to the moon, then to Mars, is 7.7 .7 kilometers per second, which is 102% more energy than is needed to simply send it directly to Mars. This is something that goes against the concept of universalization, where it uses a lot of resources, it costs a lot of money, and takes a lot of time which I think you agree is the most important research we have while our planet is already dying, having a lot of problems with global warming, global pollution. So a mission directly to Mars would be more justified while it doesn't take so many resources, is less expensive, something respectful not only for the environment, but also for humanity called universalization. So the gateway won't be critical in expanding human presence to the moon and deeper into the solar system when other missions are more justified. Thank you. Thank you, speaker one. Speaker two from Team Super Heavy, you may begin. A moon base rather than the gateway would serve as a first step towards ensuring the long-term survival of the human race, towards exploring and colonizing further reach reaches of the universe, something respectful for humanity called universalization. According to the BBC, a base would provide a foundation to pro improve our spaceflight technology, explore the lunar surface and expand our scientific understanding. There's the potential of using lava tubes and tunnels formed during the moon's volcanic past as shelters with access to frozen water beneath the surface. 
According to nationalgeography.com, the moor harbors many mysteries, including how it was formed. According to USRA, from a lunar research base, scientists could explore the moon's lava tubes, look for signs of geologic activities, and investigate hints of water ice found in the craters of the lunar poles. As stated by spacenews.com, a lunar research base would give NASA expertise in engineering and operating life support systems, sustainable energy sources, ways of supplying food and recycling water. This could help us start a sustainable life in space. Even we can implement these methods to solve a few problems on Earth, which is also universalization. According to space.com, the gateway only reduces our chance of colonizing the moon by 2024. This is a great disadvantage. Transferring the components to the lunar orbit from the Earth demands substantially more energy, requiring more powerful rockets and high emission complexity. This dramatically increases the financial expense risk and danger. Components may fail to be delivered, docking maneuvers may miss, and accidents become drastically more hazardous due to the distance from Earth. Are we ready to take such a risk? No, we're not. Hence, Gateway is not critical for expanding human presence into the solar system. Thank you. Thank you, speaker two. Speaker three from Team Super Heavy, you may begin. Speaker three. Uh, Rishika, you're on mute. We can't hear you. The Lunar Gateway is a bad idea. As exciting as it is for humanity, the Lunar Gateway is under dead end. There is no need for one, and it makes financial, not scientific sense. According to physics state organizations, astronauts returning from long stays on the International Space Station must be carried out of the landing capsule because their muscles have fasted away from tissues, even if they have worked out. According to NASA government, the Gateway will only, only have 12.8 feet so, if not have much space post requirement, a lunar base would be more appropriate for them to exercise as we don't want them to have muscle problems. The crew will be made only, only for four members. According to the American Psychological Association, the people on the gateway will have lots of needs. As my colleague already said, transport between Earth and the gateway is already heavily achieved, while the distance is astronomical. So, their needs will be hardly managed. While every 30 to 60 days, a new crew will need to come to station. Many resources will be used for transportation, distract from respectable environment, something that is called universalization. According to encyclopedia.com, a lunar base can protect those inside it from radiation better as it has protoclosed material that, ha that acts as a shield. The study made by ISS National Lab the microgravity in, in environment in the gate environment in the gateway can have deleterious effects on organisms like cardiovascular and musculoskeletal changes, neurovestibular adaptation, immune dysfunction, and delayed wound healing. So the gateway won't be critical in expanding the human presence to the moon and further into space. But it brings a lot of risk for the our human, which is which is lunar based doesn't. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 3. Speaker 4 from Team Super Heavy, you may begin. To include our debate, I'll finish that Gateway is redundant. NASA's ambiguous plan for the Gateway is unjustified as it offers less than a typical space station at a much steeper cost. NASA's expensive and unjustified plans for this station offer only four astronauts at one time while having the same practicality as a satellite or rover at an extreme price. According to a report done by Space News, NASA has even removed the Gateway from its critical path to get to the moon by 2024. The Gateway is currently an unfeasible and unnecessary. Also, areas of the moon are already being explored and scouted by rovers, satellites. And in conjunction with rovers, LRR, LROO, or Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter satellites are already orbiting eccentric parts of the moon and scouting for future robotic and human missions on the moon. If anything, Gateway stands in the way of furthering space exploration deeper into the solar system, as it'll take extra time, manpower, and an extra $30 billion in funds. Even NASA officials have stated that creating a lunar outpost or base would be more cost-effective, not only critical to exploring the moon, than creating a space station at a similar cost. 
Not only does Gateway go against the way of progress towards colonizing the moon, it also goes against universalization as a waste of resources that could possibly benefit humanity in other ways and is not considered the lunar environment. Overall, NASA's uncertain plans for the Gateway project is unjustified due to the facts that countless rovers, satellites, and astronauts already contribute the same attributes that Gateway is promising to do for less resources and time. Therefore, Gateway is no longer critical for further space exploration. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Ford. Thank you, Team uh, Super Heavy. We'll now ask Mr. Becker to open the breakouts for five minutes to prepare team summaries and the judges to confer. <clears throat> Please join the breakout rooms. Can I have everybody's videos and audios on, please? See all the breakout rooms that are working. I think we're all very excited to hear from you, Fred. Uh, how was the launch yesterday? Oh, okay, yeah, it was, um, uh, I was watching the weather and the weather was much better than Wednesday. And um, mm -hmm. let's see, so I was on the shore of Titusville on the Indian River. I was about 12 miles from the pad and uh, people were pretty much social distancing, but it was quite crowded um, all over Titusville, all over Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral on the beaches. And um, so people had their cell phones tuned into NASA TV and everything. And so the weather then, there was a big storm northwest of Titusville. It was probably about 15, 20 miles from the pad and all the jets were flying around this cloud to test it and look at it and everything. This was about 30 minutes before launch. And luckily that whole thing went away in about 10 minutes. That's how dynamic Florida is. So there was nothing in the area. And uh, so then it launched and it was very spectacular. So I've seen many launches before and it was just uh, very clean. Um, with none of the solid rocket boosters so the flame from the rocket is as bright as the sun, and it's about as tall as like maybe three or four hundred feet. And it just, after about 20 degrees up into the air, you can start to hear it. And it's very loud and, and, and everyone was cheering. And um, it, then it flew into a cloud. And so we lost sight of it after the cloud. But it, it was loud, we could hear it all the way to space. That is very cool indeed. Uh, would you like to tell us what you personally see as the significance of this launch? Well, that's why I came down because this is the extremely significant. We're funny letting humans uh, launch from the United States again. And um, it's also commercial, everything commercial crew and a new way of doing space and new technology as well with um, a different type of capsule. It's, it's, um, it looks pretty robust now. And uh, I'll tell you what, after the launch, I, I knew that there was a SpaceX factory down here in Titusville, and they had been building these Starship prototypes. So I went by to look. And so what they had was they, they're building a new rocket, a very large rocket called the Starship, and they had two teams. They made one team in, in Titusville and one in uh, Texas. So they were just like, <clears throat> excuse me, competing against one another internally. I think I can take off my mask here. They were competing against one another internally. And so the Texas team won. And so they shut down the Cape Canaveral, moved everybody. Everybody from Cape Canaveral had to move to Texas. So anyway, I went, they, they just built the, the rockets that they had built here in Tasco. They're still there. They're just sitting there. And uh, so I went by this plant to, to see these rockets. And it was, I was so surprised because he had built this in the middle of nowhere in west of Titusville, and there was like right next to a car junkyard. And I was crossing all these train tracks and miscellaneous oil factories, and I don't know what all was back there, but but that t convinced me that Elon is, is like focused on just getting the rockets working and, and where he puts his plants, he does not care. He's just getting that rocket working. Once it's working, then he'll start thinking about making nice factories for them or something. 
So right now they're building like these these rockets in Texas, like in tents and everything. It's pretty exciting. Yep, very exciting indeed. Uh, Francis and LJ, did you have a chance to watch the launch live yesterday? I did. I did have a chance to watch it live. You know, it's just always, uh, you know, the the SpaceX launch. I, I was uh, excited about it, and you know the the um, very futuristic looking capsule and uh, um, the astronaut garb, but I always get so nervous about that let launch. It's just like, oh, please, please, <laughs> please. And I, I, I think they asked the question um, of the, uh, uh, of the report of um, a, a, an astronaut, what are they thinking right now? This is after they were uh, up and they had um, uh, closed the, um, evacuation um, opportunity. He said, they are relieved. <laughs> they are relieved. So Fred, did you feel relief too when, uh, <laughs> when yeah. you saw it go? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a hard thing to do. LJ, did you happen to see the launch yesterday? Were you able to see it? Oh, oh yeah. And I think, you know, right now we needed something like the launch oh, to just motivate everybody to see that there's a future. <laughs> And, you know, and it was so, I love the, I just love the style, the thoughtfulness and, and everybody was watching, you know, I, I just really think right now, this is kind of what we needed. And the fact that it was successful, just, I think, reinforced that there is, there is a future and things are going to be okay. And uh, we can do this, like if we can put people into space that easily and with that success. And also I think the private public sector partnership, mm -hmm. that's that is the and that is also very much part of universalization is that idea that we're all working together for a common cause. I just, uh, yeah, yesterday was a very happy day. It was very happy and exciting indeed. Looks like um, we have everybody back here. So we do, and Delta. we feel deprived that we didn't get to participate in your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> the tape will be available for you. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're ready for team uh, delta before yeah, we begin um yeah can we just have the upper middle team with live videos and mic along with the judges thank you now team uh, delta representing the affirmative position please give us your three minute summary in our previous arguments we have shown that the cost of the gateways aren't that high or it's around the 370 million to build and another 20 billion for it to be shipped, not the 150 billion mentioned by the opposing team. And that will help us both in gathering valuable resources for nuclear fusion, such as thorium, uranium, helium-3, which will cover the construction costs and launch costs as well, and then some. Another important aspect is that it extends communication and it will help us get better control of the lunar surface overall. Uh, combine all that with the helping us achieve uh, universalization as well as the easiness of expanding it with modules and the fact that it can greatly benefit already existing space exploration plans and it uh, deeply supports the fact that the gateway will be critical into expanding human presence to the moon and beyond it. And perhaps in the next 10 years, we will uh, have a self-sustainable settlement on the celestial bodies due to the gateway contribution. Uh, the first thing I would like to rebuttal is speaker four. Uh, in our opinion, the only valid argument he said is that it was taken down by NASA. But as we mentioned in our argument, it was re-added on the 7th of May, which was around 25 days ago. So that's not a good point. Uh, also, it will contribute a lot towards the Artemis project and uh, perhaps some future SpaceX launches, such as the ones that uh, send the uh, astronauts uh, to various places. Uh, also, I would like to point out that uh, lunar um, settlements on the surface aren't uh, in the near future, such as the Gateway, and the Gateway will allow us uh, people to understand the, the Moon's history and to also uh, set out these future uh, lunar bases that can self-sustain. Also, astronauts tend to generally train with uh, elastic forces such as rubber bands or etc., not with weights, so low gravity wouldn't matter that much. 
also uh, the gateway isn't meant to sustain people for very long as mentioned around 30 days so those health problems mentioned by speaker three aren't coming that big in uh, impact. Also, NASA is very concerned and it's doing its best to support the healthy astronauts. Uh, and if the gateway would be useless and wouldn't have anything to offer, it's very similar to the space uh, to the International Space Station. So why would we keep sending funds and the astronauts to the International Space Station if they have nothing for us to offer? And uh, they also mentioned that trips to the Mars are more cost effective if we don't use the gateway. That is not the case and they take six months or that is with the current technology. But as advancing and accelerating as the expansion of the universe, our technology also advance. So uh, the time of travel will shorten by a significant margin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Team Delta. Team Super Heavy, representing the negative position, please give us your three minute summary. The gateway won't be critical in expanding human presence to the moon and deeper into the solar system. A mission directly to Mars would be more justified. Also, as my colleague Abinaya said, it is more efficient and economical to just build a lunar base, something more respectful for the environment called universalization. The health risk can be considerably lowered if we replace the astronauts with robots, satellites, and rovers while they can do the same thing because the gateway is orbiting and not landing on the moon, as Ryan said in his argument. A lunar base would have more space for sports equipment. Transport already needs to be done once every 30 to 60 days, so its cost will rise every month. Not only the building cost will be big, but also the cost of sending astronauts every month will be huge. Doug Lovero, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, explained the change at a meeting of NASA Advisory Council Scientist Committee. The Gateway would not be critical for NASA's Artemis program for 2024. The gateway itself is not mandatory to get to the moon initially. So we are not taking gateway out of the critical path to go ahead and get to the moon. The cost of the ISS is 150 billion, as I said in my argument. A little mistake in the affirmative summary. Speaker one said the gateway will be beneficial for humanity's economics, while we can get thorium, uranium, and other important materials from the moon. She also said it will influence the economy in a positive way and that we will have easy access to the moon. How can it be economically be beneficial while well, its costs are huge, as we explained in our arguments? A lunar base would be more appropriate for mining and gathering the resources speaker one and two just mentioned. A lunar base would also be cheaper and more sustainable than the gateway, as it can use the, the different resources on the moon, not like gateway, which takes all its resources from Earth. Speaker three said we will explore the moon better with the help of gateway. False. Lob G is only 12 feet. How can it stock fuel for other missions? She said about the materials on the moon. How are you going to get them? A lunar base is required for that. Speaker 4 said Lob G will help for creating bonds between countries. Any other space program leads to collaboration. Let's take the ISS. And the lunar base is more effective for cooperation. While well, some countries don't have money to make modules or parts for Gateway, but they can send useful tech or people to a lunar base and colony. The team also said the gateway's purpose was, will be the one to research. Research does not make the gateway critical, so it is in contradiction with the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Team Super Heavy. Um, I think we have some time for the judges to ask questions. Teams, please activate your videos. You may confer in real time online to determine who should answer the questions. Remember, anyone and everyone on your team may answer a question. However, they may not return to the question after the teams have ceded the floor. And just a gentle reminder, judges, uh, both teams should be asked the same number of questions equally. Over to you, judges. Uh, if I may, I would have uh, a one, two part question, I guess. Uh, for the affirmative team, Delta, I am wondering uh, how exactly you see the gateway as accelerating our access to lunar resources. And I would ask uh, for the negative team, Super Heavy, to clarify how Gateway would hinder access to lunar resources. Uh, can I take this one, Harry, Maya? Yep. 
Um, okay, so in our opinion, the gateway will study the lunar surface and will um, basically take a lead for us before we make any lunar settlement, because a lunar settlement is more costly, uh, contradictory to what the opposing team said, uh, because you both need to uh, selenize the props, the robots, uh, and everything you need. And uh, also, uh, it will be able to, with further technologies, obviously, uh, propel us into the future and to other distant planets, such as Mars and perhaps even outside the solar system. Ryan, can I take this? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the cost of, um, of making a lunar base is only $35 billion. And how can we get the materials from the moon and the resources? How can we mine the moon if we don't make a settlement down there? Yeah, Ryan, you can add something if you want. Oh uh, yeah, it's not only is it very expensive, it's also more of an extra step for uh, astronauts and uh, miners to get down to the moon. As you have to go to the gateway and then down to the moon, it would be much cheaper just to build an establishment on the moon and to just go there directly. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah, um, I, I guess I'll, I'll ask a follow up question. Um, both sides are doing a really good job of talking about the costs, I think. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about the second part of the resolution about whether it's the gateway um, or a different option like a lunar base um, is the better option setting aside cost for expanding deeper into the solar system. So whether, you know, whether, whether we should be pursuing the gateway option or as the negative has presented perhaps the lunar base option and why your version beyond cost is the, is the better strategy. Uh, our team doesn't. Oh, sorry. Uh, our team doesn't contradict what that a lunar a lunar base and the lunar settlement would be a bad idea. On the contrary, we think it's a great idea. But in order to achieve that, we believe that we need the gateway, such as uh, if you need to make a very complex dish, you need to first gather the ingredients to make it. You can't just use the uh, improper ingredients. If you want uh, to add something, Harry. And uh, I mentioned in my argument that the Lunar Gateway could be a prototype for further missions because we might need something uh, similar when we're going, let's say, to Mars because Mars is a lot bigger than the Moon and it would take a lot of uh, a lot more time to study it just by using rovers. The best way would be to have a, an um, orbital base to study the, uh, to study Mars, for example, or any other planet. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to add something to what Harry and Roland said. So basically the gateway is going to help uh, with deeper space exploration and travel because, you know, the gateway is going to be used as a fuel stop as a remote sensing application for discovering the history of the moon, different resources that are on the moon. It's just overall great uh, for looking at and discovering different resources on the moon because it's going to be a step towards if we want to gain access to the moon this has to be a step towards do we really want to go to the moon are there very very valuable resources there that we that are dire on our earth and additionally as our as my teammates have said going to mars is our next step in space exploration so the gateway is going to be used as a fuel stop for mars bound rockets and many materials that are on the moon can be used as rocket fuel for uh, Mars-bound rockets. So thank you. Okay, so I think that question was, uh, was so I'm supposed to answer that question yep. too. And yes, um, as Maya said, the fuel, so the gateway can be a fuel station as well for other missions. I want to remind you the gateway is only 12 feet. So the size of the gateway, how can it be a fuel station? And Roland said the gate, uh, the lunar base is not a bad idea. And if we just make the maths and see how much the lunar gateway and then the lunar base will cost, it will be huge. Why don't we make, as you said, for further space exploration missions, 
And also, as I said in my first argument, a mission to Mars is more cheaper and it's, we save a lot of energy and resources and we do that also with the lunar base. So why don't we do just the mission to Mars and then the lunar base, as it is more efficiently? Ryan, if you want to add something. Uh, no, that's good. Okay, uh, I think we've heard from both the teams. Maggie, do you want to ask a follow-up questions or are we good? Okay. So uh, now we'll ask Mr. Becker to open the breakout rooms again. Uh, teams, if you accidentally go into your breakout rooms, please immediately come back to the main room. Thank you. Mr. Becker. Uh, before we go, can we get a few extra minutes of time? You'll be getting eight minutes. Thank you. Okay, uh, can I have everybody's videos and mics? I hope the people who went into breakout rooms will join us again soon. Uh, time out, I have to um, close the room so that I can change the length of it to eight minutes. Okay. Uh, we got into the breakout room and we were told that our meeting was going to end in like one minute. So yeah, I, I, think we need to get our... I need to um, close the room so I can set it to eight minutes. Okay, so while we wait, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone uh, saw the launch or read about the launch in the morning. and Everybody is very excited. So I, I want to hear from you guys. How are you feeling after the launch yesterday? Oh, uh, actually, I feel like it's another step since um, the launch used the renewable rockets and they're not fully tested yet, to say so. And uh, it was successful. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's expected to uh, get the astronauts there in around one hour, maybe two hours. Yep. Mm -hmm. What time was this launch in India? Um, I think it was somewhere around two, maybe at night. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I stayed, I stayed up on Wednesday, but yesterday I thought um, I'll, I'll wake up and find out if it happened. So I woke up to my phone blowing up with everyone saying, oh, the launch was so cool. And I'm very sad I missed it. In Romania, it was about uh, 10 o'clock, is that right? Yeah. So, very good. Okay, while we wait, um, how, how, how do you feel about today? Um, I know that in both of your coaches is Francis. And I'm sure she's very excited to watch you debate. Um, I want to hear from you guys. How are you feeling about this particular resolution and your position? You can just raise your hand if you want to take the question. Yeah. Roland? I mean, yeah. if nobody takes it, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I think the resolution is pretty good since it shows that uh, NASA val values the opinion of other people concerning the way the funds are invested and what's the plan for the future, basically. And uh, as for the opposition, I think they were really good and did a great job. Thank you, Roland. Um, I, I want to ask you guys, um, this is the third day the debates are happening. And how, how, do you, how different do you feel from when you debated on the first day and today? A lot less nervous. In fact, a lot less nervous debating right now. Yeah, we feel much more confident today. I think uh, even the yeah. hosts and the moderators are much more confident today than we were yeah. on the first day. And I'm kind of uh, confident because I have Francis ma'am over here, present in the debate. <laughs> Would anybody else like to add to that? Firstly, I saw many debates, but uh, this is a quite different debate for me. I don't know how many just know that. 
so actually coming to the we are going to have just debate in the news channels or something we keep the videos to know how do we debate before the tournament but it's quite different because everyone just uh, debate like okay i'm going to say this this but this is out why is this important why need to we do this so i think even i gathered a new information even too yeah that is very accurate rishika i think uh, as we for everyone when i say we all learn something new when we hear you guys debate and every single time it's a it's a fantastic experience for us so you guys did a fantastic job today i, I want to say that again so amazing job you guys and yeah i i want to ask uh, what was the most difficult part of this experience for you and how did you overcome it me okay the first thing i felt very difficult was the question first asked to me was what is universalization <laughs> okay i really don't know about what is it okay i was like asking francis ma'am i was not getting or ma'am was telling me since one week two weeks done but i'm not knowing what is universalization when we started argument b i just know what is universalization so mostly i know that Will anybody else like to add to that? Maya, what was your most difficult part of this experience? I think, um, well, from the first debate, I think, kind of bouncing up uh, from this question, but I was kind of less confident, and uh, I think as we've done more debates, I've learned from other teams, and I think we've improved our arguments, and also the most difficult part. of doing this debate was probably um i mean i did debate at my middle school so i'm pretty familiar with it but uh probably just connecting the arguments to universalization i, I think that would that's going to be the hardest mm-hmm. Harry what about you what was the hardest part of this experience Well, I think the hardest part about this experience was actually being up to date with everything because uh, mostly on the lunar gateway because everything changes so fast. Like uh, in one mm-hmm. second it was taken out, in another it was put back into the critical path. So you needed really to like you couldn't just do your uh, write your speech and leave it like that for a month. You always had to come back to it and change things and make sure that it's up to date. I think that was like the most engaging part, mm-hmm. the research itself. And Ray, what what was the hardest part for you? I think the research, yeah, yeah. So to find evidence for different arguments, yeah. But it it was also fun because I learned a lot of new stuff, yeah. I wanted to ask. Uh, this these are all my um, students. I uh, coach two teams, and uh, so it's it is such a a boost for me to see you. Uh, at the same time uh and uh, boy i am so glad i am not a judge <laughs> so glad um <laughs> ask a rolling a question when you look at the two resolutions um how did they uh compare in terms of your um preparation uh you're asking which seemed harder or just, just seemed how harder. are they different how are they different how was your um mindset different uh did they kind of pull you in different directions oh uh, i think they kind of pulled in the same direction but uh, a bit also in the same in the opposite direction uh because with the gateway it's not yet so certain but uh, with space funds it's kind of certain at the moment interesting interesting and i wanted to ask you about um this universal universalization uh, concept and um now since you've had a chance to prepare for both um resolutions uh how are you personally feeling about moving uh forward in your own life and um embracing or not embracing uh universalization can we get a little bit of a uh, discussion on that Well, uh, I believe that uh, talking so much about universalization and etc made us a bit more considerate of our fellow humans and perhaps maybe a bit kinder and a bit uh, more patient so I can say You're talking about in the debate experience itself? Uh 
no in my day-to-day -day life also. Interesting. Because Ryan, how about you? Do you have some feelings on that? Um, yeah, I think universalization is definitely something we need to consider as we move forward in not only life, but throughout space exploration and travel. I, I can feel this group is pretty tense. I know you're waiting to see uh, what happens here. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, um, what, what is your feeling about this whole universalization concept? I think universalization is a great idea and a great concept. And I love its principles, but I'm kind of, uh, I'm not sure it's going to work. I don't have the faith that Roland has in it because uh, I've seen concepts that are really great that are absolutely destroyed by human nature. So I don't think I really want to see that happen to universalization as well. Because sometimes, I mean, it might work, but, but most of the time, concepts are great as concepts. And when they're put into reality, reality is a lot harsher than imagination. Yes. The implementation will be very difficult. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've but... seen this a lot in the past. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all seen that. Andre, what would be your, um, your response to that? Can you please repeat? <laughs> Harry, in a nutshell. Uh, I repeat? Just in a nutshell. What yeah, okay. Uh, I, I basically said that I don't know if, it's, if universalization is necessarily going to work because it's such a beautiful concept that uh, basic human nature might twist it. Andre. Well, yeah, it might be very hard to achieve it, but... I think we kind of can do it, but it's, yeah, as Harry said, it's really hard. Sounds like you all were having a very interesting conversation while we were gone. <laughs> you're you're going to have to stop doing that to your judges. I know, we're missing the good part. Yeah. Um, Dr. Edmonds, would you just like to follow up on those comments about the difficulty of um, seeing uh, the actualization of universalization? Sure. Well, my premise is you have to aim high. And I believe in humanity. And I believe very strongly that space is different than any other frontier. And if you're, if we as a world are willing to risk conflict over uh, cooperation, I just think that our destiny might change. And so if there's any time for you as this next generation to really facilitate a unified approach to space development that safeguards our sustainability, it's now. And I don't know if we have an option. So aim high. Don't let, um, as you would maybe say, human nature or the, 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 the challenges of human nature drive this particular agenda. Because I do believe space changes the game. It makes it much more serious. And I think that um, going to space yesterday just reminds us how important it is that we do it together and we do it with style and we do it with hope and energy that will really bring humanity together. Thank you, LJ. So, aim high. so yeah, uh, the judges have returned. We are all anxiously anticipating the results. Now, uh, everybody, please activate your videos, but mute your mics. And I'd like to request the judges to give your feedback before you announce the winner, please. Over to your judges. Got it. Go ahead, Jim. Ah, putting, putting me in the hot seat, eh? I That's did. Okay. Did you notice then that? You, then you are going to be the one to announce the winner. In that, that is case. fine. I can do that. Um, for my part in looking at it, uh, one of the things I would like to say that made... There are two types of uh, impressions I should suppose I got. One was in terms of uh, the speaker's persona, the way they projected themselves. So I would say that's something for everyone to be mindful of is to, you know, not be too close to your camera, uh, to take a step back so that 
uh, people can see that more of your body is engaged with some uh, body language as well, uh, some pacing in terms of your delivery, more like your, for my part, uh, you know, uh, slow things down just a little bit in presentation. The second is with cross-supporting of uh, multiple lines of argument. And I saw some of that from both teams. I think it's something uh, that pretty much across the board, you know, needs to be improved. And I'm thinking of the other teams that I've judged as well. So coordinating uh, as a team, I think, is really crucial uh, to presenting a very persuasive case, uh, not just to the judges, but to, you know, everyone assembled. And make sure that your arguments, uh, in addition to cross-referencing one another, are cross-supportive of one another. And uh, for my part, I, I thought that the super heavy team did a little bit better job with a uh, cross support of their arguments than uh, the Delta team did. So uh, although you did have a kind of, uh, at my impression was there was a central thrust on the whole question of the key role that lunar resources will play uh, in the future. So, uh, but I want to thank both teams because I took lots of notes and I learned a few things today. So thank you both. Uh, Maggie, having said that, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really enjoyed the opportunity to judge all of you. Um, Team Delta, it was great to see you again. Uh, and Team Super Heavy, it was so lovely to meet you all this morning. Um, this, is, this has been a real pleasure. Uh, I think you all did a, a very good job of um, making your presentations and using sources for the most part to back up um, those assertions, I thought both teams did a great job of answering the questions um, and sort of using those to, to flesh out your arguments even more than you might have earlier. Um, we did determine at the end of the debate that the negative team, Team Super Heavy, was the winner of the debate um, as a result of doing a slightly better job of connecting their arguments directly to the question of the role of the gateway in achieving the goals of um, both uh, in, in achieving the goals of uh, human presence in the moon and deeper um, presence in the solar system. We thought that the negative um, sort of successfully demonstrated that the gateway was not um, the essential component of that. Um, and while well, the affirmative did a great job of explaining to us why um, going to the moon or why getting resources from the moon was gonna be really important, the negative did a good job of countering that by explaining that maybe it's not the gateway um, that's the, the key part of that. Um, but both job, but a great job by both sides. Um, and this was, this was a really nice way to start the day, at least here. Thank you very much, judges. Congratulations to both the teams, Super Heavy and Delta. Everyone, please unmute your mics and let's have a round of applause for all the participants in today's fun debate. Thank you, everyone, for uh, having made this match possible. Team Super Heavy, you will proceed to the next match, which will be today at 10 a.m. CDT in room 14. Good luck, guys. Uh, Fred and Francis, if you can stay on at the end for a minute. Yes, and I'd like to, uh, if, if we okay. are finished with the recording. Okay. I hope everyone enjoys the reminder of your morning, your afternoon, and your evening. Thank you very much for participating in the May tournament of the Spun Debates World 2020. Thank you. Okay, could I have my fantastic team? job, everybody? No. Yep. Oh. Recording. <laughs>